So whether we're talking about cos, sine, secant, cosecant, if f is any of these four, then f of x plus 2 pi equals f of x because our period was 2 pi. So of course, if we have horizontal stretch, that's going to change, and we saw how that changes. Uh, if you want to see how that changes with algebra, so if you have, uh, for example, f of 2, f of 2x, f is periodic, so I'm just going to add 2 pi, like that. And then I'll just do the tiniest little bit of algebra, like that. And then you can see if there is a stretch, so this will be a horizontal stretch of a half, or a compression, then it looks like your period is pi. So here's algebraically why your period is pi. So if you instead of had just x, you had 2x, this is algebraically how it behaves. So you can see the original period was 2 pi, but if you uh, treat it like this right here, you'll see the period looks like it's pi. And so that's how our graphs went from period of 2 pi, then they got cut in half, so the period was just pi. So now we're going to go into uh, tangent and cotangent. And I did all these four functions first because the standard period was 2 pi. Tangent and cotangent is not the case. We'll start out with tangent. And of course, tangent you could write as sine over cosine. So right away, this is going to have similar properties to the secant function. The similar property it's going to have is the vertical asymptotes are going to be exactly the same. You're going to divide by 0 the exact same x values, because they both have cos x in the denominator. So all of our vertical asymptotes are going to, in secant are going to show up in tangent also. Of course, the numerator is completely different. So it's not, the same, it's not going to have the same graph, but it will have the same vertical asymptotes as our secant function. So let's go ahead and do the clueless method. We're going to plot some values and then figure out what's going on. And we'll just go first quadrant, plot all the values that we know about. So clueless method, x tan x. We'll start at 0, like we did before. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Tangent of 0 is 0. Tangent pi over 6 is something, I think that's 1 over square root 3. Uh, pi over 4 is, tangent of that is 1, and then square root 3. And pi over 2, I could write tangent is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So that'll be our vertical asymptote right there. So we're going to have vertical asymptote at pi over 2, which, if I scroll up, better be what we had on the original secant graph. Not our transformed secant graph, but our, here we go. Here's our original secant graph. And we see vertical asymptote pi over 2. We're going to get another one at 3 pi over 2. So that's how they're going to be similar. That's about the end of their similarities, though. So square root 3, when you get out a calculator or a smartphone or something smarter than me, I don't know those numbers. I know square root 3 is between 1 and 2. I, it's not that close to 1.5, but it's somewhere close to that. And then we need a 1 over square root 3. So we'll go point, let's do 0.58 for that guy. And then the regular square root 3? 1.73. All right, so we'll just do 1.7. All right, plot these. There's really four points and a vertical asymptote. So we're going to plot these four points and then the vertical asymptote. 
and make sure you got enough room. We want to go, eventually we're going to go to 2pi. So we want quite a bit of horizontal room. Go all the way to 2pi, pi in the middle, and then quarters are pi over 2s pi over 2. So starting out the same exact way we did before. And now everything we're going to graph is between 0 and pi over 2. So we need pi over 4, halfway between. Uh, pi over 6, these are the third, the 1 third and the 2 thirds. And I think we've done enough of these. I'm not going to label every single x value, but we know how they're lined up. The ones we're not using are those right there. That would be the sixths. Well, that's how it's evenly split up right there. So first point, zero, zero. Easy, that's the origin. Uh, pi over six, 0.58. So I better decide where one is. So I see pi. So I'll try to go about a third that far. We'll say one minus one. And I'll mark off two also. And minus two. So at pi over 6, we have a little bit more than a half. So we'll go right about there. Pi over 4, we have exactly 1. Pi over 3, 1.7. It's getting pretty close to 2. About there. And then, of course, our vertical asymptote, I'll draw in blue. So we are ready to connect these together with a curve. And it's going to look about like this right here. So there's the first part of our tangent function. So now I want to go pi over 2 to pi. I could draw some or figure out some values, write them down, plot the points. So we can go ahead and do that. So after pi over 2, we have 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 5, just kidding, 5 over 4, 5 pi over 6, and a regular pi. So 2 pi over 3. We should go negative 1.7. Well, I'll write the exact values and then the approximates right next to them. So negative square root 3, negative 1, negative 1 over square root 3, and then 0. So we're just going through the second quadrant of the unit circle right there. So same thing, except x is negative. So we're tracing the same values. They're just all going to be negative, because it's positive y divided by negative x. And then we'll write the approximate values for the ugly numbers. Negative 1.7, negative 0.58. So pi, we got 0. And then that's pi over 2, 3 pi over 4 in the middle. And then we cut into thirds and thirds right there. At 3 pi over 4, we have negative 1, 0.58, and negative 1.7. So it should be pretty obvious from these four points what's happening. We're approaching the vertical asymptote on the bottom. So connect them together with a smooth curve. Like that. Now, I said the period for tangent was not the same as before, not 2 pi. What does it look like the period is for tangent? Looks like it's probably pi. Because if I copied what we have and move it to the right, pi, it would match up perfectly. At least the 0 matches right at 0 there. 
So why is that? Why is the period pi? Let's think about tangent on the unit circle. Wow, that's a blob. A little better. So let's look at the antipodal point. That means point at the other side of the circle, the exact opposite side. So if I told you the coordinates of that point were x, y, what would change down here with our coordinates? What would happen to our x coordinate down here? So whatever x was there, our x here would be the same thing but negative. So I go negative x, and then y, same thing happens to y. y is pretty close to 1 right there. So down at the other side, we're really close to negative 1. So x, y, the opposite side of the circle is negative x, negative y. So it's called the antipodal. And if we have theta right here, so that was our original angle theta. If you have to use theta, what can I call that angle in quadrant 3, the angle on the opposite side? Well, I could give it another name, but I want to give it a name. Uh, we can get very specific about what it is. So if you know what theta is, in the first quadrant, what angle are we dealing with in the third quadrant that's on the opposite side? So it's a half rotation away, so it's a pi away. So this will be theta plus pi or pi plus theta. I'm going to write it as theta plus pi. So go theta and then rotate halfway. And y over x is negative y over negative x because the negatives are going to cancel out right there. So negative divided by negative, same thing as just y over x. So either side of the circle, y over x is the exact same thing as negative y over negative x. So what this tells us, tangent theta equals tangent theta plus pi. There is nothing special about theta right there. I could have picked theta really small right there. And then where's the opposite or the antipodal point will be right over there. And whatever x was goes to negative x, y, negative y. I could have picked one in the up here in this quadrant. I'll do a box. The antipodal point will be this point right here. And same exact thing. Whatever x, y was, make x negative, y negative, and you'll be at the other one. So there's nothing special about theta that needed to be in the first quadrant. It works for any quadrant. So there is our, uh, the reason tangent has a period of pi. Now if we do a tiny bit of algebra here, if I take the reciprocal of both sides, or if I cross divide, the opposite of cross multiplying, divide each side by the other side, I'll get 1 over uh, tan theta is 1 over tan theta plus pi. And the reason I did that, this is co, ooh, cotangent. Cotangent theta equals cotangent theta plus pi. So a tiny little bit of algebra gives us the periodic property of cotangent also. So tangent and cotangent have period pi, not 2 pi. So most functions have 2 pi period, except for the tangent cotangent. They got period pi. So what that means on our graph, I don't need to plot any more points. I can just use periodic property. I know it's pi, so I'm just going to take that one period and then shift it over to the right. So do that right now. And make sure you also shift your vertical asymptote too. That comes with it. So everything right there between 0 and pi is going to get shifted over. Mm, 
maybe. Yup. Absolutely. So we actually drew in this graph two periods. Nope. Tangent of pi is zero. That's the y over x in this point on the left side of the unit circle right there that I just made. That'll be zero, negative one, no. Uh oh, negative one, zero. So if you go y over x, you get zero right there. So the two times you have vertical asymptotes on the unit circle is top and bottom. That's when your x coordinate is zero. And it's a little bit tricky to go from tangent on a circle to tangent on a line. So when your input's an angle, it looks very different than when your input is on a horizontal line. So it's a bit tricky to go from tangent on a circle to tangent laid out on a graph where you're measuring your distance down the x-axis instead of your how much rotating you're doing. All right, so we're just going to summarize this with one, uh, with one nice graph, just one period this time. And this is the one you're going to memorize. And we're not going to use nearly that many points. We're going to cut it down to a bare minimum. Just x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes. So we're only going 0 to pi. And vertical asymptote in the middle of this, which of course is important that we write the value halfway down, pi over 2. And we got our two parts of the curve are going to look like this. You could write a period of tangent like this right here. So you could write your tangent like this, choose this as a period, but I just want to warn you if you go this way, your period doesn't start at zero your period starts at uh, negative pi over two. So it's gonna mess up the graphing method that I showed you a little bit. So th yes, this is a period of tangent. And in the future, when we invert tangent, we're gonna actually use this one period because it's nice and continuous, doesn't have two separate pieces. But for memorization purposes on a graph, I recommend you memorize what I have there in the box because every period that I showed you will start at zero and end at either two pi or pi. But we'll just keep everything consistent for you. So we'll spend a little time doing cotangent and then we'll do maybe one or two graph problems. And then we're gonna get into uh, inverse functions.